สวัสดีค่ะ Science 100 First of all Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, it is such an honor to be speaking and sharing my knowledge and uh, experience with all of you. Uh, as I understand, this is the first year I choose to study a uh, citizen science class. And to me, it is something I work closely with. And uh, I think it is such a great idea that you have the opportunity to learn about it and uh, getting good at it because I can tell you from my personal experience that it does make a difference to the natural world, especially to the wild animals that are basically helpless and can protect themselves. Uh, citizen science has provided so much information and with this information comes the protection of the animals. So. You're doing a great thing and uh, keep it going. I hope that you enjoy doing this class as well. So today I'm going to share with you about how it is to be a citizen scientist and what difference could being a citizen scientist make and the effect that it has made already for my project, especially for the Thailand Mentor Project. We're going to go through the slides together. Before we start to get into more detail about citizen science, I like to introduce myself just so you get to know me a little bit more and find out how is it that this person became the project leader of Thailand Mentor Project. First of all, my name is Jamie. I was uh, raised in Bangkok, which is the capital city of Thailand. I got a chance to spend a few years um, down south of Thailand when I was younger. Every weekend, we would go to the beach. And I guess that's when my connection to the ocean comes about. I fell in love with the ocean and always look forward to the weekend. You know, it's the happiest time of the week for me. Then we moved back to Bangkok and I find there is a calling uh, for me to keep going back to the beach after I finished high school. I started backpacking and every chance I get, I would find myself on an island or at the beach somewhere. In 2012, I kind of pushed my boundaries and went for a pageant, which is called Miss Scuba International. And I happened to won that pageant, which opened many, many doors of opportunity. It allows me to travel the world to different dive shows and diving the world for one year. And that's where I met a lot of inspiring and dedicated people, such as scientists, divers, underwater photographers. And that's where I got to learn about the Manta Trust and Manta Ray. This is when I found out that uh, Manta Rays are actually being threatened from the Manta fisheries. The, there is a trend that the fisheries are requiring to kill the mantas just for the curators for traditional Chinese medicine, which really touched me deep down. And I promised to myself to do whatever I can in my power to protect these species before it's too late, before they're following the, the same story as the sharks and the shark fin industry. Since Miss Scuba International, I've basically been working very closely in marine conservation. I've been an advocate for the ocean, especially the manta rays. The manta trust found out about me and informed me about the volunteer opportunity in the Maldives with their Maldivian manta project. I applied for a volunteer program there, got accepted and had the best three months of my life. For three months, six days a week, we would go on our research boat and following the aggregation of the manta rays, this is one of the very few places on earth where you can witness the mass feeding where up to hundreds of mantas could be feeding together. And this is once of a lifetime experience for me that I would never ever forget. Whenever we see a manta ray swimming around, we would put on our fins, snorkel and our camera, jump into the water with them, try to get the ID shot. And afterwards, at the end of the day, we would sit in the office and process all of these databases that we have and do our research. It was a very, very important lesson for me to get to learn from the animal in the wild. So about a week before I had to leave the Maldives, uh, people from the Manta Trust approached me and asked me if I might be interested in starting something in Thailand because we have the Manta population, but there's no one managing it and they're not protected. How can I say no? I mean, I got to practice and I have the knowledge and I had the energy and the power to do it. So 
that's the start. That's uh, when the Manta project has started in Thailand in 2015 when I returned home and uh, the rest is history. This is why I'm here speaking to you about the citizen science. In case some of you have never seen manta rays before, I have a short video that I made for our citizen science program here at Thailand Manta Project to share with you. In this video, you get to see the mantas and what we actually do in our program. So I hope you enjoy. We'll speak a little bit more about it later. Enjoy the video. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. As you saw in the video, uh, the manta rays, they have these distinctive spot patterns on that belly, which we can recognize the individual, very similar to our fingerprints that can tell who you are. And from that one photos or video of the spot patterns on the manta's belly, it could already tell us a lot about the individual, the trend of the individual, the trend of the population, the population size and the migratory uh, route that they are going because these guys they're, they're ocean travelers they're migratory species so they travel long long distances so for me to be everywhere it would be impossible to follow a manta or follow 10 mantas at the same time which is why we need help from the general public to work together with us to find out information about these big big birds in the ocean so let's continue with our first slide what is citizen science? I mentioned it countless times already since the beginning. Citizen science is simply a collaboration between general public, like you all here, and the researchers and scientists around the world, like myself. We work together to find out more information about mostly the natural world. In my case, would be the manta rays. We get the submission from the divers who has been seeing mantas along with a little bit more information such as um, date, time and the uh, sighting location. So we find out more about the population and with this information we gather, it could make a difference to the future of these species. Which lead me to the our next slide. Why does this matter? Why are you studying citizen science? What difference could it make? I can personally tell you and promise you that it does make a lot of difference that we have citizen scientists all over the world helping us. Because, uh, for example, my project uh, in 2015, we started off, the manta rays were not protected locally here in Thailand, which means it's legal for you to fish out this big fish. With the slow, very low reproduction rate of the manta, fishing one single manta out of the water could affect the whole population size and the survival of the species in the local area as well. After we uh, started the project, basically we gathered information together. We found out there are a few populations here that of course are not protected and is worth protecting. So we approached the government at the end, the government agreed with all this information that we have that um, we need to protect the manta rays in Thai waters as well. So after three long years of waiting and a lot of working, uh, last year in September, the manta rays were added to protected species lists in Thailand. Big round of applause and a lot of thanks to all of the citizen scientists who have been submitted all of the manta photos and video along with the information to us. 
it helped getting these species protected in Thai water. So that's just the own, the first example that I can actually tell you from my personal experience. Oh so yeah, citizen science is very important for um, our natural world. So studying it is, is something that is needed to happen and I'm glad that uh, you guys get to start on this one. Let's move on to how. How can you support the citizen science project uh, such as our project as well it's very simple i'm sure many of you here has a um, gopro okay has a cell phone and any kind of cameras basically we need the photographic evidence to show and uh, to to analyze as well so if you see anything just take picture something that is interesting and then send it but don't just send it to facebook or instagram okay you have to send it to the researchers to the projects that are doing the research on the particular uh, animals or species it's just as simple as that what you see you took picture and then you send send it to the right people very simple what's more important is the next slide that we are going to talk about self-education it's very very important that you keep yourself updated to the information and whatever find something that you're interested in in protecting i mean i am on the island i'm in tropical island and i love the ocean i'm passionate about the manta rays and that's why i chose to do this for you it could be different wherever your backyard has to offer then do it such as what you already been doing the coastal willows or the opposite birds whatever your interest is start doing it you know it, it could be a lot of fun as well for yourself to see the changes the differences um, of these species and this living that you care about get started and get educated if you're going on a holiday somewhere then maybe have a little research some of the species that you would like to see then maybe some people are doing this, the the project trying to save them so get involved um, if you see the whale shark somewhere in the philippines take a picture and then send it to the whale shark research there it could make a difference the same way as it has with the mantas in thailand here it got them protected now let's get into more technical side of how to take the photos so that it can be useful for the researchers and scientists each individual animals have a different way of identification such as manta ray the spot patterns on the belly the whale shark you would see the spots on the between the gills to the dorsal fins so find out the information of the species that you like and love and passionate about see how can you tell them apart and um, try to get those shots apart from that we definitely going to be needing some date uh, location of sighting and time as well I recommend you to update the time and date on your camera for a different location that you go so it's go to the local time that way the date stamp on the file can become useful in the future once you find out maybe you have the old photos from a long long time ago that now you find out it could be useful for the researchers and then you can go back and check the date that it has been modified then you get the the, the time and that would be a very important information another thing is of course the behaviors most of the animals in nature basically living for three main purposes which are feeding cleaning and mating learn how do they look like when they are doing these behaviors and you can add additional notes to the researchers which help a lot as well and of course, uh, sometimes you might see some special detail if you have a chance to have more time and of the encounter. But then you would notice some small things such as this one has an injury, even though you can photograph the injury. But if you're sure it's this individual has an injury, you can add into the information. The researcher would then pay a closer attention to these individuals and make sure and monitor it a little bit closer to, than the other one or pregnancy mating scars something like that all this little extra information helps us but the main thing that we need are the photos the videos and the date and location let's move on to another sl uh, slide 
don't forget that whatever you're doing, you're working with nature and we are only visitors in their world, especially for the oceans. Uh, you're entering yourself into the water. We all make an impact one way or another. Remember to make as minimal impact to whoever that are living there as possible because you don't want to disturb them. Same with tourism, such as sustainable tourism. If you go to do wildlife wash and um, some activity like that, make sure that you know the code of conduct and you act accordingly. You don't chase the animal. You don't stress the animal just to get the photos. I've never asked anyone to chase the manta ray for the photos. I actually asked them not to chase them. Just wait for the moment for them to come to you and respect the environment that you're in as well, not just kicking and stepping on coral just to get a photo of mantas, then uh, the habitat is getting destroyed along the way and that is not a good thing and that's not what we want. Just keep in mind, be respectful and remember that you're just a visitor in their world in that case. Last but not least, there is more than one way to help. I know today we're focusing and we're talking a lot about citizen science, but we're living in the same ecosystem that whatever you do will affect one another. Whatever action you're doing today will affect the environment around you. Um, getting your meal, knowing what you're eating, the seafood that you're eating on your plate, knowing where it's coming from. You can already save a lot of marine species that way. Knowing that your seafood is sustainable is a very important thing as well because how they're catching it, it could have damaged a lot of lives, a lot of coral reefs, destroyed it, a lot of habitats before uh, it becomes your food. So try to choose a sustainable seafood, trying to do whatever you can in your power to, to make a good impact in this world, you know, because um, we need it. We, we are in this together. You're studying about the citizen science and the environment is science is, is a great thing. So I hope you are enjoying uh, what you're studying and I hope that uh, this video can inspire you a little bit uh, to hear my story from the field here all the way from Southeast Asia, uh, from Koh Lanta in Thailand. What you're doing is, is a great thing and it's also an inspiration to me as well. Let me know if you have any questions and hopefully we will have another session where I can answer your questions as well, if there is any. And keep on what you're doing. You're an inspiration to me. Thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, I won't be taking any more of your time. Enjoy the rest of the day and hopefully we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.